Welcome back to Shem's Universe. So today guys, we're gonna go over how to get rich with astrology. So a lot of people have been asking me in my DM since my last video, like, how do I put this all together? Okay, I have a good rising sign. Like, what job do I do? Blah, 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 I get it. You have to figure out your full chart. And I, I, you guys probably feel like I'm just trying to sell you the astrology reading, but the truth is that you actually need to know what's in your natal chart in order to know how to get rich. You can't just use your rising sign by itself. Some people can, if they go into the subject matter that revolves around it, they'll do okay. But you still need to know like a little bit more in regards to what exactly you wanna do. So you have to know how you make lucky money, what sort of position were you meant to be and where you're supposed to learn from material transactions. And also uh, what sort of career path are you meant to be in? Like what, what's your status there? So what we do is we first look at your rising sign, like I was saying the first time, that's your first house, it's your appearance, your general immune system, um, how you operate, your attitude towards life. So that's gonna tell us a lot about, when I mean us, I mean any astrologer, by the way. It tells us a lot about what your natural skill sets are and then where you would shine the most. That's why a lot of people were agreeing with me when I said rising sign Scorpios can get into like tabooish sort of subjects and do very well because it's the eighth sign. It has a lot to do with the underworld and things of that nature. So they do very well there, right? When it comes to now, we have to look at the second house. This is the primary money house. An important thing that you guys should note is that all three of the money houses, meaning your second house, your sixth house, and your 10th house are all earth sign houses, right? The first one is your Taurus sign house. This is where you're gonna find stability. So when you know what sign and what planets are in your second house, you then can evaluate what you're best suited for when it comes to making good money. For instance, if you were to have, I would say, Gemini in the second house, then I'm just gonna use this as a one example. You need to have multiple streams of income because Gemini is very multifaceted. You also would need to have a communication-based income. That's where you'd make the most money, right? So you have to evaluate it from there. It would top it all off if then you had maybe Venus somehow in your second house as well. And then it can mean you can sell like apparel, uh, beauty supplies, stuff like that, go online, make money with cosmetics. So it all depends on like what you have, meaning your sign, and then what planets are in there. The governing planet is always what sign is in the house regardless, but we'll go over that in another video when it comes to more advanced astrology. For this one specifically on how to get rich, just understand what sign is in that house and what plants are in the second house. The next one would be like your sixth house. Your sixth house is the house of Virgo. Um, this has a lot to do with your health for sure, but it has a lot to do with material transaction, like how you learn best when it comes to money. Um, it also will describe like what sort of position you'll have. So like, let's say somebody has like maybe an Aries in their sixth house. I'd say, yeah, they'd be a very almost uptight boss. Like they'd be very strict, very militant. So if you have Aries there, it means that you're meant to run sort of a team. You're meant to tell people what to do. So that's just an example again, right? You can have anything there and it's going to tell you different things. And it's also going to tell you what health implications to watch out for. You also want to make sure you're keeping your health up to par, meaning you don't negate that part of the sixth house and not take it seriously. You have to take that part of the sixth house very serious when it comes to your health. If you have like Gemini there, it's going to say watch out for like lungs, respiratory system overall, and um, circulation. So you have to actually take those things in consideration because if you're keeping your health intact the way it's recommending, that's also gonna be a surplus for your wealth because you're gonna be in a better mindset. You're gonna be in a better position to actually make proper decisions. So of course, follow that. Um, there's a secret house as well. There's the eighth house that people actually overlook a lot. The eighth house is a house of personal transformation, occult, but it also means like um, hidden money, taxes. What sign you have there can tell you where you can actually make some low-key money and money that you should keep on the lows or money that you can make for other people through different partnership endeavors. People really overlook the 8th house. They never talk about it being a money house, even though it can be. So that's just a bit of a bonus. That's a bit more for advanced astrologists. When they look at your 8th house, they can see, hey, maybe you can get into um, sport betting or crypto or what have you, and you can make money there depending on what's in your 8th house and if you're meant to make money in that sense. You can also even read if somebody's gonna be a criminal in that way, but another video again, I'm not gonna expose all that. 
Um, the tenth house, going more back to our given subject, is like one of the main houses when it comes to midheaven career. You know exactly what a person meant to do. If you see like Leo in the tenth house, for instance, you know the person's meant to have a performance-based career, whether it be on stage or whether they be like in some sort of authority position with what they're doing. So all of that, like you have to take it very, very seriously. Once you understand that how your second, your sixth, and your tenth house um, integrate together, then you can start to sort of fill in the puzzle. And then also, if you're able to understand your rising sign, you it sort of teaches you how you can make money the best and I guess where you would have the most luck overall, like what trending topics you can utilize. If you're somebody like myself, like when I looked at mine, I thought mine was a bit confusing. Um, I think I had Libra, second house, if I'm not mistaken. I had, um, I think I had Gemini in my 10th for communication base, which made sense to me. And then um, I'm trying to think of what I had in the in the sixth house, I believe it was Capricorn. So when all these things came together for me, I thought it was pretty mixed up. It didn't make a lot of sense. So what you have to do after, if that doesn't make sense to you, is you have to look at, okay, the houses here seem mixed up. For me, it seemed like it was off because like, the second house was telling me I can make money through the opposite sex. The next house was telling me that I could uh, make money by being kind of like a general manager. I'd be v viewed very competently at work and I hated a company job as I'm a life path eight. And then I had a 10th house that was saying like, yeah, your career is not that serious. It's just communication based because usually people with Gemini in the 10th, like people don't take them too, too serious when it comes to their career. So I thought these summaries were a bit like inefficient for helping me find a career. If you have that same predicament, instead of coming to me and paying for a reading, what I'd say is actually go online and then look at your expression number. Even if you just go on Google and Google expression number calculator, look at that, put in life path number calculator, look at that, and then see how does my life path correspond to like what I'm like? How does my expression number correspond to what I'm like? Meaning your life path, of course, going to tell you the general subject matter of your life, like whether it's going to be about money, about social, about family, about ideologies, about spiritualism, all these things, right? It's different facets. So you'll figure that out through your life path. And then through your expression number, you'll be able to figure out what, um, what skill sets do I have? And what you'll find is that your astrology chart won't seem so mixed up anymore because your expression number will include the things that you were meant to use to make money in your astrology chart. So for me, I have Gemini 10,000, I have um, expression number 14 over five, makes sense, five is communication based, five is very much about um, performance as well and just talking overall, very good when it comes to speeches and writing. So I'm like, what do I do? I write reports, I talk on social media, I make money with that and I've gained quite a bit of followers from it. So that's where you start to understand that these things do tie together. It's just a matter of you it, it depends on what suits you more. To me, it's like if somebody knows numerology very, very well, that's all they need. If somebody knows astrology very, very well, it's all they need. But if you're just at a, in a bit of a beginner class where you're just trying to figure everything out, I think looking at the whole thing, you'll start seeing repetitiveness in messages, meaning like your numerology chart will be saying some, one thing, and then you'll say in your astrology chart, you'll see the same thing being said again. And that's the best sort of way to get it done is by understanding what are the repetitive messages that I'm seeing, especially when it comes to to money. Numerology will tell you that in your expression number for sure, in your life path, and maybe even your soul, depending on what your, your passion is. And then your second house, sixth and 10th will tell you a lot about how to make money very, very directly. So when you put those things together, you should be able to surmise what type of career would suit best for you. And when you choose that career, understand guys, I, I didn't use that title for no reason. You will figure out how to actually get rich and max out with that career because that career is what's gonna give you the best luck, meaning it's the least amount of friction and your, the universe actually wants you to do it. So it's gonna propel you forward a little bit faster than if you're going against the grain. All right, so if you have any questions about this, guys, just please leave something in the comments for me. Aside from that, like, subscribe, holla me, it's it for today, guys. Peace.